This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 10. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. At this moment, one of the most dramatic moments in the flight of Apollo 10 since its launch from Cape Kennedy on a Sunday afternoon. At this hour, the crew of Apollo 10 is about 724 miles from the moon, statute miles, as the crow flies, except that no crow has been reported flying there, 247,000 miles from Earth. It's plunging toward the moon at some 5,000 miles an hour, almost 5,700 miles an hour it'll be very shortly. To put it another way, Apollo 10's about as close to the moon now as New York City is to Indianapolis, a trip that uh, a lot of us have made. It's uh, as far from the Earth as the equivalent of 25 round trips from New York to Sydney, Australia, which few of us have attempted. A couple of hours ago, we had a last look at the crew before it headed for the dark side of the moon, the side away from Earth, outside of television and radio range. Uh, we hope to have that uh, look at the uh, astronauts as they reported to us uh, a little after one o'clock our time, three hours ago. Right now, they're on the way to the moon, as we say, and for lunar orbital insertion, which will come on the dark side of the moon. Let's listen to the conversation as they approach the moon, as relayed to us from Mission Control in Houston. They're coming up uh, sporadically here as they report their last uh, maneuvers in getting into a position which is uh, with the back of the spacecraft facing toward the moon or their orbital path. They're pitched about 22 degrees. Uh, that is uh, just a little bit off of the vertical. At in about five more minutes, 4.37 uh, this afternoon, signal will be lost with the spacecraft as they disappear behind the dark side of the moon. And then, just nine minutes later from that, they will fire their uh, service propulsion system engine, 20,500 pounds of thrust, for almost six minutes to put themselves into orbit around the moon. That is a braking maneuver. They slow down from 5,700 miles an hour, which will be their speed at that point. And in order to prevent being slung by the uh, moon's gravitational pull back into a course toward the Earth, they will uh, slow down to 3,700 miles an hour, which is the orbital speed around the moon. They'll go into then a high elliptical orbit around the moon with the low point at 69 uh, miles above the moon's surface, the high point 195 miles above the moon's surface. They'll come back from that dark side of the moon and for the first time report to us how that uh, very important burn of the service propulsion system engine went at 70, at uh, 5, 12 p.m. That's going to be quite a long wait for the men in Mission Control in Houston and all of us around the world as we wait almost breathlessly to hear how they have done uh, in that uh, important maneuver. They're, they disappear at 4.37. Uh, according to the present calculations, they reappear at 5.12 as far as the communications go. The burn should come at, uh, as we said, uh, 4.45, or nine minutes after the disappearance uh, behind the moon's surface. If by any chance they find that they cannot fire the service propulsion system engine, or for any reason decide not to fire the service propulsion, propulsion system engine, uh, they will come back around the moon just a little bit earlier because they'll be making 5,700 miles an hour instead of going through that braking maneuver, of course, and then we would hear from them at one minute after five. Here's a transmission from them. Apollo 10, stand by for Mark, 10 minutes. Mark, 10 minutes, ignition. They're giving them a 10 minute mark for the firing of the Service propulsion system engine. We should have about two and a half more minutes of. Mark two seconds early to allow for the lag time in communication. That's the voice of Jack Riley in Mission Control in Houston. The voice in Mission Control, who is the capsule communicator, 
talking to the spacecraft is Charles Duke. Two minutes to LOS. Uh, everybody here says got the. Okay, and we'll see you right on the other side in orbit. All right, there's 76, 22, 55. LOS is loss of signal. The command module with the lunar module attached to its nose, as it has been since uh, they linked up on Sunday afternoon, shortly after liftoff from Merritt Island, the Kennedy Space Center, goes into an orbit, or go passes the moon to the left side as we look at the moon, and is grabbed by the moon's gravitational pull around, pulled around to the far side. At that point, the spacecraft engines are fired to slow it down, a braking action which slows it down by 2,000 miles an hour, from 5,700 miles an hour to 3,720 miles an hour to put it into lunar orbit. You perhaps have heard the last from the spacecraft You've heard uh, Houston wish them Godspeed, and Stafford say, we'll see you on the other side. Which may turn to, out to be the phrase from all of these moon-orbiting spacecraft, since that was the last word we heard from Frank Borman when Apollo 8 went around the moon in December. The time has come for, officially, the loss of signal. And presumably we have now heard the last of the spacecraft until sometime after 5 o'clock, uh, at least 30 minutes from now. Before this flight began, David Schumacher spoke with Command Module Pilot John Young about the reliability of Apollo 10's giant engine. Well, I think uh, the service propulsion system has certainly shown that it's a very reliable system design-wise. I don't... I don't, I don't think that it has any design problems. Uh, one thing about Apollo 10 that we didn't have in Apollo 8 is if, if, if we can't do lunar orbit insertion, uh, you know, if for some reason the engine doesn't light and we coast out of lunar orbit, or if it lights and only burns for a little while, we have and then shuts off for some reason, we can still get out of lunar orbit with a descent propulsion system on the lunar module. So we're a whole spacecraft up on the Apollo 8 guys. And uh, again, if uh, for some reason before we uh, start our rendezvous and stage the descent engine on the lunar module, uh, the service propulsion system were to quit, we can redock, leave the descent engine on the limb, and use the descent engine to get us back. So we're a couple engines ahead for a long period of time. So, the Apollo 10 is now going to the other side of the moon. It is between, the, or the moon is between the Apollo 10 and Earth at this point, so we can't hear anything from it. Those three great tracking stations with their 85-foot dishes are hearing nothing from space at the moment. Uh, we wait now for word from Apollo 10 when it comes back from the other side of the moon. It's going to be a long 30 minutes until we get word that they have successfully fired that service propulsion system engine, about which you just heard John Young talking to David Schumacher. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment.